Uh, to start off with, what I'm going to do is turn the circulation system off. Basically, the power supply to the, uh, to the circulation pumps are, uh, are here. This one will cut power to that pump. This one will cut power to that pump. To, to operate these valves you squeeze and there's, it releases a mechanism there that bites into these sort of teeth so once you've squeezed it it releases that and then you can rotate the valve so now that the circulation is off obviously we've got no water moving around the system at all now and it's very important here to make sure that the uh, there's no possibility of the chemical dosing continuing. This is the chemical monitoring station and you've got a sample of water coming in here and what we can do is we can trace that all the way back to basically here. So that's the sample line because when the system is, is, is operating this is all pressurized and that will force water along along here and it picks up the probes are reading the chlorine and the pH and because it because this pressure coming through this is suspended in this position and that is able to detect that that is there and it tells the system that there is flow now there's no pressure there's no flow and it's dropped and that has, it can't see it there anymore, so, so to speak. Um, can't detect that it's there and has shut it down and it's, and it's reading no flow. But now, it's a good idea to not rely on that alone because they do fail. So, because what's happening is the water's coming through and then it, it loops back so it's going through the, the, the uh, monitoring equipment and it loops back into the suction side of the, um, of the system. So it originates there, goes through chemical monitoring, re-injects back into the suction side of the system. But you can isolate the, um, the chemical dosing here and here. So when we, when we do a backwash, we're going to be establishing flow again. And there's usually a time limit, a, t a time delay on that, and it'll be a couple of minutes before it sparks back up. But you don't want the chemical dosing to start back up again while you're doing the backwash. So that will ensure that even when we've got the backwash running, that that still won't be able to detect that we've got flow going through the system. We know that water's go is at the moment. We've got we've got this valve configuration set up such that water's coming in here and is going through the top through this top pipe. Which that's that it, that is that isn't what we want. What we want to achieve is we want to get water going through this bottom pipe, and we want to force water the wrong way or, or backwards through the filter and get it coming out of this top pipe. We don't want to return it to the pool though, we want it going to, to drain. So if we look at what is going on at this, at this end, at the moment, if the system was on, water would come out of here and it would go back to the pool. But that's not, we want, not what we want for a backwash. We want water coming out of, well, because we've got to be backwashing the mid filter, it's going to be coming out of there. We want to send it here because this one goes out, if you follow it along, it goes out to, um, sometimes there's a, there's a clear section of pipe work so you can observe the, the color of the water. So that's where we're going to be sending it. That's the objective. 
So what we need to do is, is play around with these valves to achieve that objective. A good thing to remember with, with this is that we want to protect that pool. There's, uh, there's 875 cubic meters of water, more if you include the, um, the balance tank volume. We don't want anything going wrong with that volume of water because it's going to take an age to correct it because uh, there's so much water there. So it's a good habit to get into to isolate the um, pool from what we're doing in here. And you can do that by, and this is a good idea to do with the manipulate this, make this the first valve you manipulate, is the one that sends the water back to the pool. Now I'm looking at that pipe work and there's no valves along uh, any of this other than this is the one, this here. So this one, what I'm going to do is close it. Now what I've done, if I make a mistake, you know, I, I, I muck something up, get something wrong, it's not going to affect the pool. You know, I'll soon realise that something's not right when I re-establish the circulation and I can turn it off and figure out what the hell's going on, but I won't have negatively affected that huge volume of water in there. Instead of water going along there, we want it going along here. Now what we, do, what we want to do really is open this valve and then close that one. It's, it's got a route now through here. Now, we're not doing anything with uh, filter number three, uh, one. So we want to isolate that from the system. Close it off. So that takes it out of the equation. We want to leave, we want to leave filter number two as it is, because that's the one that we're backwashing. And we want to, close off this one and now what will happen is the water now it's coming along this bottom pipe can't go back to the pool it can't go up here it's got nowhere to go got nowhere to go except in there up that's the backwash that's what we want to achieve fluidize that sand bed out here it's going to come up to here it can't go back that way because we've got a, a closed valve down there it's going to come this way what we want to do is open that up to clear a route for it to for it to go so now it it's got this route this open route now to this backwash pipe it's always worth double checking that there's no valves that are closed and so when we spark the circulation back up, give it a, a few seconds, but we'll see that we've got water going there. This system requires both pumps running in order to get the flow rate, but we two pumps aren't required to do a backwash. One pump will be sufficient. And there we can see <coughs> the backwash running. The idea is, is if there was a clear piece of pipe work, you'd get a better idea of the color of the water. Because you do a backwash and initially the colour in the sight glass would go completely opaque, completely cloudy, and then it would gradually get clearer and clearer as you successfully clear more and more pollution out of the, um, out of the filter. And it gets to a point where it's as clear as it's gonna get, and then you, you, you've, uh, you've completed the backwash. So usually it takes, well it depends how polluted the water is and how long it's been since the last backwash, but four or five minutes, something like that usually.
Okay, so the backwash is finished. We've successfully cleaned filter number two. And then if we move back over to the filters, what we've done, you can't see it because, because it's obviously a, a closed vessel, but we've agitated that sand bed. You know, we've lifted it into suspension. We've clean, cleared out all of the pollution that was entrained within it. What we need to do is, is compact it back down. And that, this is achieved via what's called a rinse. This is where you have water coming through the filter in the normal way. But when it comes out of the bottom, it continues to be sent to the drain pipe rather than back to pool. Okay, so to achieve that, what we need to do is manipulate the valves again. So this time, what we want is we, is we want the water back to come in through the top. So we, we want to open up this valve. We don't want water going here anymore. So we'll close that one off. So now what's going to happen, water's going to come along here. It's not going to go in filter number one. It's going to come along here. It's not going to go through filter number three because we've still got that closed up. It's going to go in, out. And what we want is it can't go back that way, so it's going to come along this way. We don't want it going back to the pool, so we're going to keep that valve in the closed position. We want it going up here, so we want to close this one and open this one. So if we was to close that, and we were to open that, what will now happen is water will go into that filter, out at the bottom, it will come along here, it won't go back to the pool, it will go out to drainage. And that will compact that sand bed back down. But there might still be some slight discoloration to the water. You wouldn't want that going back to the pool. You know, you want the pool to remain nice and clear. So all you do now is turn the uh, system back on and you wouldn't, leave, you wouldn't do the rinse for the same, it wouldn't require the same amount of time with the rinse there's, that the backwash requires. So if, if a backwash needs four or five mi uh, minutes, the rinse might only require 30 to 60 seconds. And then after a, a little bit of time, you should see water start to come through there. Okay, so now what we're doing is we, we're getting, we've, we've backwashed the mid filter and we're getting things back to normal now. So what we want to do is have, go back to a situation where we've got water flowing through all the filters. So we've already got water coming through here, which is what we want. So we're going to open up filter number, filter number one again. Yep. Open. Oh, already open. Filter number three, we close that one off. Uh, open that one, sorry. Open filter number three. So water's going to be coming out of the bottom now. Now at the moment we've got this open and that closed. So this we want to close so we don't, we're not continuing to send it out to drain. So we close that one off and open that. And then close that one. Okay, so before we turn the circulation back on, it's always good to have a double check just to make sure you've got everything right. So you've got water coming through here, it's gonna go through there, it's gonna go in, it's gonna go out, can't go back that way. It's gonna go in, it's gonna go out, can't go back that way, so it's gonna come along here. It's gonna go in, it's gonna go out. When it gets to here, can't go to drainage, it's gonna go through here. You see up there, the blue, the blue valves. 
on top of the filters. They're air release valves. So it's a bit like in uh, with a radiator set, or the air builds up. In a system like this, uh, the air will tend to migrate to the top of the filters. So those are all open at the moment. Yeah, there's a master valve, isn't there? Yeah, that, that red one above it. So if we open that, when we turn the system back on, any air that builds up, you've got to you've got to let it get you've got to release it. Some some places have automatic ones that you don't have to manually do. Uh, so yeah, um, we'll leave that we'll leave that open for now, and then we'll see if any air does escape, and then we'll close it off before we leave. We lost the audio video at this point, but we checked we had things back to filtration configuration, closed the air bleed valve and re-established chemical monitoring and dosing.